Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, Mike Cannon Brooks, you once tweeted that the best way to fight climate change is to treat it like business. And you also believe that um, renewable energy sources such as solar and wind energy or power could replace Australia's $70 billion coal industry. My question is for the panel, um, where do things stand now and what should our government and our country's innovation vision look like in the near future? Thank we'll, you. we'll start with you, Mike. Uh, thanks, Colin. Uh, where do things stand now? Um, good question. Um, Especially after well, the North Queensland backlash. Well, uh, uh, we had, look, the, the Minister for Emissions Reduction celebrated his first week uh, by putting out our emissions <laughs> numbers that have gone up for the fourth year in a row. So, uh, uh, fantastic, great move. Well done, Angus, because that was a good start to his, uh, his career as a Minister for Emissions Reduction. Um, I think, look, as you mentioned with the election, we're probably not going to see a lot of political change in the next few years when it comes to climate change. Uh, and that's not just energy, although that's the biggest sector of our emissions, right? With agriculture, transportation, there's a whole series of uh, sectors we have to look at to uh, um, make change as such an existential issue. Um, we, you know, we're going to need corporates. So, you know, Atlassian, uh, uh, We've joined this group called RE100 to uh, pledge to go 100% renewable, uh, which is not a simple challenge. Three and a half thousand staff, seven different countries, ten different offices. Um, we now have three of the top 25 companies in Australia have joined the RE100. Um, so you're seeing corporations realise not only is this a huge um, a moral issue, it's a huge financial issue for them, it's a huge ethical issue. So three of Australia's top 25 companies have now said they're going to go 100% renewable. So you're going to see corporate sector have to take a lot more control, I think, and a lot more charge of the issue. Mm. Um, well, you're pretty hooked into global markets. Yep. Um, the question was about the replacement of the coal industry. Um, where, where is coal going from your perspective? Um, well, it's going away. <laughs> uh, quite simply. Look, I mean, it depends on the protection you look at. Fifteen Even massive years. markets still in China, in India? What do you... China and India are both peaking in their coal usage. They've had massive run-ups in the last five to ten years. Um, you see that already tailing off in China. Uh, I think it's going to continue. I mean, coal's future as an energy source, um, 15, 25 years, it doesn't matter. If you're from Australia, and I think it's a $70 billion industry for us, it's a massive, massive industry, and it's going away. Call it 50 years. We should be planning for that now, right? We need to plan people's transition and their, their jobs, their livelihoods. We need to plan our economic transition. Uh, we can't just stick our head in the sand and assume it's not going to happen. Or if you're right about the curve up. of uh, demand in China and India, uh, what happens when the curve goes down the other side? It's pretty brutal for us because I think what you'll see is uh, China and India will naturally prop up their local coal market they'll support a local coal producer, that will not be good for us. Um, so you won't see... The, the long-term future for that as an energy source is, is not good, um, which is an economic issue for us. Put climate change aside for a second, which is sort of insane to say. From a company point of view, as Australia, we, we have a huge economic problem there um, and we need to do something about that. We have a lot of po possibilities, but denying it's going to happen is, is the worst possible strategy. Larry, what do you think about that? We need a plan. So um, there is a global um, market. So we don't have a plan currently. There's a, there's a, actually CSRO has three plans. The the problem, as Mike said, if you add up coal, LNG, and iron ore, because without coal you can't make steel out of iron ore, it's it's 160 billion dollars of export revenue. More importantly, it's a third of all corporate tax paid in the country. So the taxes that pay for healthcare, um, education, social services. So, so we can't lose that tax base. We need something to replace it, but at the same time, there's a global market trend away. So CSIRO has been working on some breakthrough um, science <laughs> technology, something I prepared earlier. <laughs> we, we, think, we think one option is this um, device which we call the hydrogen cracker. Turn it on. So basically... <laughs> <laughs> it's stolen from the Doctor Who's Not in a closed room. <laughs> But basically, um, you can put a liquid fuel, ammonia, which has no carbon in it and therefore no emissions, you can pump a liquid fuel inside this and get pure hydrogen out the other side. So it's literally a seamless transition from ammonia to hydrogen. You can use all of the liquid fuel infrastructure around the world. You can fill a ship with ammonia, ship it, for example, to Japan, 
and then use it there as a purely 100% renewable fuel. And we invested in this because we think it could go some other way to replacing the fossil fuel exports and paying the taxes that we need. We talk about <laughs> solar panels and, and the solar cell design that's being shipped by China all around the world was actually invented in Australia. So I'd kind of like to do something a bit different, a homegrown solar cell that we can produce here through 3D printing oh, cool. rather than buying it in from overseas. Now, look, I'm, I'm not a close the gate person, but when you've got this massive export revenue, you need to replace it with something in order to continue to grow our economy. So CIRO's plan has us going to carbon neutral without derailing the economy. And that's the, that's the important thing. That's the challenge we're trying to solve. Larry, I'm bound to ask you the obvious question, which is that the CSIRO was given vast sums of money to, pro to produce clean coal. Um, is there any such thing as clean coal so, so technology? Look, if, if we have a lot of coal, and if you could use science to do the impossible, the seemingly impossible, and turn coal into something that didn't emit greenhouse gases, we would do it. I will tell you, we have created a version of coal that has 30% less emissions than a gasoline engine. So that's a great step, but it's not zero, whereas hydrogen, we believe, can go to zero.